Well, God has not ceased working. He's worked through the church, the Holy Spirit working through the church. It's okay, so there's there's the key issue. Did you catch that? Let, let me... At many, many centuries of church history in which there is no, no Bible. Well, God has not ceased working. He's worked through the church, the Holy Spirit working through the church is continuing to communicate truth. The truth, not only of scripture, but a proper understanding of that scripture. And you can kind of... Okay, so here, this is important. We need to catch this, okay? So what you do is you cast doubt on the canon of scripture outside of the authority of a church, in this case, Athanasius's decision, evidently. And then you say, all these centuries go by, but the spirit was still active during this time, right? And so the Spirit is communicating truth in Scripture and the interpretation of Scripture. Now, Rome does this by saying there are these apostolic traditions that are passed down orally. Eastern Orthodoxy does this through the concept of the liturgy. The liturgy and prayers of the church are the outworking of the ministry of the Holy Spirit amongst the people of God. And hence, as it really comes into, Orthodoxy tends to chafe when you point out that her traditions are pretty much 8th century, 8th, 9th century. She wants to say, no, they're, they're all apostolic. They just happen to be seen with the greatest clarity by some of the great writers of that time period. Um, you know, the rise of Islam causes a uh, clarification of things, which is true, by the way. Um, but, but the idea being, you know, it goes back to ap apostolic uh, tradition. But the idea is the spirit, the living spirit in the living church produces liturgy and prayer that becomes the matrix in which the scripture is to be interpreted. This is the orthodox denial of sola scriptura. And it's different than the Roman denial of sola scriptura, which provides a functional, technically non-revelatory, but in light of what has been defined by the church um, since then, plainly is revelatory, categories, of this oral tradition that has a, allegedly should have a historical existence to it. As is always the case, the Orthodox understanding is significantly less concrete, which is why I have sat in this chair for a number of years now and said, we're not gonna get into all this and we just keep getting dragged into it one way or another. But what you're hearing is the orthodox denial of sola scriptura. And I think one of the reasons we're seeing, we go through cycles of this, and once you get my age, you get used to seeing the up and down, um, and you don't get all excited about it. Other people do, they haven't seen this before, but I think that's why we're seeing the current interest in orthodoxy amongst uh, reform people and stuff like that. And you always get your converts and it's, you know, it, until you've been doing something for 25, 30 years, I'm not impressed. Um, uh, when you're, once you're consistent for that long, great. Uh, but once you've seen as many people go this direction, that direction that I have, you that's why you eventually end up really honoring consistency over time. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> I think one of the reasons that we've got this current uptick is because not only are people not familiar with the categories and practice of Eastern Orthodoxy? The way I just expressed it sounds sort of cool. I mean, it does. I mean, and th there are elements of truth to the continuing presence of the Spirit in the church, um, the intimate connection that is to exist there, the, the reality that Christ is building his church, and therefore we can learn from those who've come before us. But that's totally different functionally than the idea that Scripture cannot 
function as a reforming, objective source of divine truth that corrects the church. See, the biggest problem with Eastern Orthodoxy is it can't be reformed. It can't be reformed. It is encrusted in 8th and ninth century tradition, which has become the only possible lens for the interpretation of anything, including scripture. And so the voice of the bridegroom is now completely confused the voice of the bride. And you can't distinguish between the two, and therefore you can't have correction. That's why solo scripture is so important. You can't have reformation. The idea being, well, you'd never need it because the spirit won't lead you into these errors. And that's the problem in not recognizing that in this life, the church is going to have all sorts of false sons within her pale. And so there's going to be need for reformation. You need to have clear access to the voice of Christ in his church. And once you, in essence, bury that voice by marrying it with the voice of tradition, you become encrusted and stuck. And that's where orthodoxy is. That's where orthodoxy is. Now, in America, they use that as a positive thing because they, they look at evangelicals who have no historical foundation at all, have no appreciation of the, of the fact that Christ has been building his church at all. And they use that then, just like Roman Catholicism likewise uses the, the allure of the ancient church standing in the midst of time, unchanged, so on and so forth, until you start digging in and find out where the changes have actually been. Then things change.